Lauren. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you again for joining us today to the presentation of the digitalization and certification as innovative tools for, to help e, e firms and farms access new markets. My name is Yasmin Kavarnalieva and I'm COP of EDGE, which stands for uh, Economic Development Governance and Enterprise Growth. Allow me to first provide a little bit of introduction and talk about EDGE, putting the today's panel discussion into context. EDGE is a five-year, uh, 21 million USA funded regional activity in Europe and Eurasia that supports creating inclusive, um, sustainable economic growth and intra-regional and Euro-Atlantic integration. In doing that, we are building resilience of ENE countries to withstand the economic pressures of Russia's war on Ukraine and counter Russian malign influence. We are supporting inclusive economic growth through private sector development and business enabling environment um, improvements. We are taking advantage of, uh, of the regional synergies to address regional problems in creating partnerships with USAID bilateral projects and other donors uh, economic development projects. To accomplish our key objectives, we design and implement core activities that promote regionalization, reduce barriers to trade, and support the growth of SMEs in three key value chains, fruits and vegetables, incoming uh, rural eco and adventure tourism, and light manufacturing. So far, we have implemented 296 core activities involving two or more countries and supporting more than 1,700 local private sector organizations across Europe and Eurasia. Improving the business enabling environment, fostering trade and directly supporting the private sector um, uh, development is one of the key things that we're doing in, in this area. We also use uh, localization through the co-creation of activities with local organizations and grants. In the same time, we are increasing competitiveness of the value chains through digitization, which is an important aspect of mitigating migration. In addition uh, to the core activities, we have been using the demand-driven buy-in approach that allows us for quick mobilization of activities in any edge countries for bilateral or multi-country regional activities. So far, we have completed seven buy-ins and we are currently implementing the last one investment transparency activity, which involves all the edge countries. Both the core and buy-in components include the uh, grants under contract uh, mechanism to promote capacity building and sustainability of local organization or organizations, government entities, and private sector. We have completed 59 grants, and we are currently implementing eight regional grants under the core component. Here on the slide, you can see the list of all buying activities that we have completed and the one which is now under implementation. One very important area of EDGE's impact is related to four freedoms, including facilitating of movement of goods and people across the borders. In this area, we have, helped, uh, we have been helping countries harmonize and converge with the European Union acquis and WTO trade facilitation agreement to create a level playing field for trade and investment. In doing that, we have supported cross-border coordination and building economic ties within the region and with the EU. Some of the key results in this area include promotion of the joint border crossing point concept and the actual establishment of a joint border crossing point between North Macedonia and Albania that is expected to reduce the time and cost to move the goods across the border by 50%. We have also been helping the CEFTA countries in drafting the new common regional, regional market action plan, which was signed and adopted by all six Western Balkan countries and which is now under implementation. We have also assisted CEPTA countries to draft and adopt a regional decision incorporating the transitional rules of origin into the body of CEPTA agreement. In this area, we organized a total of 29 regional events and strengthened more than 700, uh, 700 uh, capacity of more than 700 participants from the public and private sectors on trade facilitation and economic cooperation. In the area of improving business enabling environment, EDGE brought together public and private sector stakeholders uh, to, in, to enhance public and private uh, dialogue to reduce barriers to investment and promote economic reforms. Some of the key results here include producing a report on catalyzing investment in Ukraine that Administrator Power presented at the US-Ukraine Partnership Forum. 
We also supported transparency and privatization of state-owned enterprises in U Ukraine, also creating a tool for evaluation of assets in, uh, for, that are ready for privatization. We have strengthened PPD processes and institutional framework in Armenia, and we have developed investment framework for Armenia, among other things in this area. In terms of eco promoting economic prosperity, uh, we have uh, worked on improving a targeted value chains, value chains competitiveness through enhancing their sophistication, supporting export promotion, and expanding market linkages to promote regional integration and integration with the EU and global markets. Some of the key results in the fruits and vegetable uh, value chain are listed here, but I'm not going to um, talk about them because you will hear more about the certification and uh, uh, digitization later on. But in addition to these that are mentioned here, we have uh, strengthened the capacity in the green the entrepreneurship, EU green agenda and smart agriculture. We have provided a top notch training and capacity building for uh, fruits and vegetable producers. And also we have um, supported producers to participate at the best international trade fairs and B2B events in the world. In the area of um, tourism, we also uh, we, we also helped um, uh, tourism uh, tourism participants uh, to um, many capacity building activities, and we supported these value chain participants to start quick recovery process immediately after the COVID nineteen crisis was over. As you know, tourism was the most badly hit by the COVID crisis. So after the the COVID crisis was over, we we were ready to provide immediate assistance to the tourism sector. We initiated uh, creating the first ever Western Balkan Regional Adventure Tourism Association, which is now registered as a legal entity in Montenegro, and it, it is uh, open and running. We have also created one of our flagship projects called Transdinarica Cycling Route that is connecting all six Western Bal Balkan countries, which is generating, which is expected to generate economic uh, growth uh, along the route. We also provided 40 grants to guest houses in Moldova, who then opened their do doors to host Ukrainian refugees after the war started. In the light manufacturing, again, in addition to certification, digitization, uh, improvements in productivity and so on. We also, that you will hear late, later on from the other panelists, we also provided uh, top-notch uh, trainings, capacity building, and supporting the companies to participate in the best uh, international trade fairs and B2B events. Uh, finally, as mentioned earlier, we have established partnerships with uh, many USA bilateral projects and other donor projects. Here is the list of key partners. We have uh, managed to get 59% of leverage from those partnerships, and certainly we created a lot of partnerships with uh, many local organizations. So I don't want to keep more of your time. Uh, now I would like to invite Mr. Stephen Little, um, Senior Economic Officer at the USAID e e Bureau, who has kindly agreed to moderate the panel discussion to take the floor and open the discussion. So, Stephen, please go ahead. Thank you so much, Yasminka. Uh, and uh, it's a pleasure working with, with Yasminka. Uh, I also serve as the uh, project manager here with USAID uh, for the EDGE project. And so we've uh, come up on almost five years of implementation for this project. And so we have some great lessons learned and I look forward to, to sharing today. Um, and most importantly, I'd like to, to thank our distinguished panelists for their time and contribution to today's discussion. I'm confident that I speak for all attendees, uh, that we are looking forward to your insights as you all bring different experiences around this important conversation. Uh, for attendees, I think this was st stated earlier, but if you have any questions, uh, feel free to post them in the chat uh, and I will try to harvest them and uh, raise them uh, at the end of the discussion uh, today. Um, just moving along, uh, EDGE's work is critical to support the U.S. government's foreign policy objectives in Europe, including promoting Euro-Atlantic integration and reducing reliance on Russian export markets, which has been used as a tool to manipulate political decisions through embargoes, opaque transactions, and the like across the region for many years. Today, we'll learn from three panelists who will discuss EDGE's work in e e to help firms access new, higher value, higher standard markets through certification and innovative digitization in the Western Balkans, Georgia, and Ukraine. 
Now, before we delve into their presentations, I would like to provide just a brief background on certifications, which uh, Yajmika touched upon. The certification process for firms involves first implementing the required standards, normally with assistance from an expert consultant, uh, and then receiving certification after inspection by a certification body. EDGE provided support to companies on both of these steps of the certification process. The companies contributed by in-kind contributions, demonstrating their commitment to the process. During today's discussion, we will touch upon the light manufacturing and fruit vegetable processing value chains. So first, I'd like to touch on light manufacturing, and our first panelist is Blagoya Miloshevsky, who is a senior advisor on EDGE for the light manufacturing sector. Blagoya is a management consultant specializing in business and operational planning, financial planning, and implementation of management information systems for the light manufacturing sector. So just a couple, a couple of quick questions to start things off, Blagoya, and I'll let you uh, take it from there. Uh, how important are certifications in the light manufacturing sector and what impact do they have on product quality, consumer trust, and market competitiveness? Further, uh, what role does digitalization play in the light manufacturing sector and how does it affect aspects such as design innovation, production efficiency, customer experience, and market competitiveness? With that, over to you. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Thank you for the introduction and thank you for the question. Questions, I will uh, start my uh, short uh, presentation. Uh, just briefly, um, uh, both are very important for the light manufacturing uh, 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 sector. Uh, both uh, digitalizations and certifications are very important for the light manufacturing sectors. We discovered that in the beginning of uh, the EDGE project uh, during the uh, the two studies that we did at, in the beginning, in 2019 and 2020, we did value chain analysis and workforce analysis, which gave us uh, a very good uh, directions in which areas we should focus on in order to help the light manufacturing sector. Light manufacturing sector at Edge covered two value chains. The first one is wood and furniture, and the second one is um, textile and apparel. So our key strategies and our areas of, fo of focus were productivity improvements, including digitalization, certifications, and assistance in accessing new markets. Uh, both studies have uh, showed that, did show that uh, most of the companies in the light manufacturing sector are already familiar with the ISO group of standards, and many of them already had one um, of these standards, most often, most commonly, the quality management system ISO 9001, but some companies had even two or three of the ISO standards. So what we decided was to focus more, uh, more on the industry-specific standards, uh, separately for the textile and apparel, and for the wood and furniture sector. In the textile and apparel value chain, we focused on uh, the two uh, work, uh, workers-related standards, those are BSCI and uh, SMETA. Uh, the, uh, it, initially, we organized a webinar uh, to, to raise the awareness about the importance of these uh, uh, standards, and later through a grant program uh, awarded to a, beneficiary consist, a grant beneficiary consisting of uh, three uh, organizations from three countries of the Western Balkans. Uh, uh, we implemented uh, uh, BSEI and uh, SMETA at 26 companies in, in these three countries. The, the countries are Albania, North Macedonia, and Serbia, and the consortium consisted of uh, three organizations uh, and clusters from the relevant clusters in the textile and power value chain in these uh, countries. In the uh, wood and furniture, we focused on the environmental uh, standards, FSC and PEFC. On the photo uh, to the right uh, bottom, you will see the certification. This is a photo from the certification of a company, Elnor, a furniture producer from uh, Kosovo. They produce kitchen cabinets, uh, dining uh, tables, and uh, chairs from solid wood. And uh, during this, uh, in this process, the external auditors would monitor for any non-compliances and advise company to to change them. Uh, the company. Uh, Two months after the company got certified, they were able to bid for a bigger project to furbish uh, a, a hotel in, in Kosovo. And uh, in addition to attractive prices and um, high quality of products, the deciding point for 
them to be chosen as the supplier of uh, the furniture was the fact that they had uh, the PEFC standard. In total, we uh, supported the certification of 13 companies, uh, six from uh, Western Balkan region and seven companies from Ukraine. Uh, about the importance of the certifications, we can talk uh, a bit more through our uh, efforts to support the companies from the region participate at various uh, uh, market access events, such as B2B events and the participation at, at trade fairs. And all of these activities show that uh, in the textile and apparel, very important were the, the social standards, while in the wood and furniture value chain, the, the, the customers looked for uh, the environmental standards. Uh, in addition to certification, we also focused on digitalization with an uh, attempt to uh, support companies in improving uh, productivity through the use of digital tools. In the beginning, we organized uh, several webinars to raise the awareness about the importance of the digitalization in the companies. And later, through a grant uh, program, uh, the so-called e-Academy, we supported uh, 18 companies from the region, from Bosnia and Herzegovina, Montenegro, and uh, North Macedonia to uh, introduce uh, production planning and optimize their production processes and uh, how to use additive production in uh, their work. In addition, uh, 28 companies from the region were represent uh, representatives of 28 companies from the region were trained to use a specific uh, CAD CAM software for the uh, for the wood and uh, furniture production. Uh, in the in regard to digitalization in the textile and the power value chain, we also did uh, some introductory webinars to raise the awareness. And uh, digitalization in textile industry can be uh, a challenge, although many of the companies have already started uh, using digitalized equipment. So, in order to raise uh, uh, to show how uh, a product. Uh, Computer simulations can be used to improve uh, productivity, improve line uh, balancing. We organized a pilot project in four companies from the Western Balkan region, one from Albania, one from Bosnia and Herzegovina, one from North Macedonia, and one for, from Serbia. And uh, the findings, for, uh, we did uh, uh, computer simulation of one production line in each of these four companies. At the end, the findings were presented before a large audience consisting of uh, apparel producers in the edge region, including the Western Balkan countries, Moldova, Ukraine, and uh, Georgia. So with this, I will uh, end my uh, presentation. Uh, and if you have any questions, please uh, uh, put them in the, uh, in the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Logoya. Uh, and one thing I think it, it's uh, very interesting to note, having followed uh, Edge for the last almost five years, um, is we've been through, Edge actually started, for those who aren't familiar, started prior to the COVID uh, pandemic and evolved through uh, the last several years um, and, and noticed some, some significant changes that I think the project has been able to to confront uh, notably with respect to uh, both the sectors that are discussed today, but in particular, the light manufacturing is the uh, change in orientation uh, of nearshoring uh, following the COVID impact. And so that's the interventions that we've seen in light manufacturing have, have been very important to uh, the nearshoring trend uh, in the EU in particular. So, so there are some great lessons learned uh, on certifications and, and how we're building the value chains um, in the Western Balkans, as well as linking to, to Ukraine in particular uh, and Georgia to serve the, the EU market. So thank you for, for your insights. It's definitely valuable. Uh, and hopefully, uh, again, we can share these lessons uh, broadly. So moving to uh, fruit and vegetable production, uh, next we'll hear from Sasha Risteski. He is a senior advisor on edge for the fruit and vegetable sector and co-owner of the Macedonia Consulting Group. Sasho, uh, a quick question before you uh, head into your presentation, which you'll cover. Uh, why and how can certification programs help fruit and vegetable value chain uh, improve market access? Over to you. Yes, thank you, Stephen. Well, uh, I will start my presentation with the following statement that uh, globalization has revolutionized the food supply chain. And when it comes to a whole and it opened a whole new world of existing companies of opportunities for 
the companies, including fruit and vegetable companies. As countries globally increase their demand for food ingredients and raw materials and finished products, now the next issue is protecting the consumer while promoting food safety, security and quality. And that was the starting point in EDGE efforts to uh, support these initiatives that are very important. On the, on the level of the European Union, uh, and also for the countries that are trying uh, to attach to the European Union community, uh, there is one organization called, called Global Food Safety Initiative, or GFSI, that is taking care about implementation of the latest food safety and food quality standards. It has become a benchmark organizations, organization that sets goal, global standards for food safety management system. Now, the most, the most uh, recognized standards coming from GFSI are Global GAP, FSSC 22000, IFS, and BRC. I have to mention here that Global GAP is mainly for fresh, while the other standards are for processed and finished products. On the next two slides, I'm not, not going to spend a lot of time because it provides only an overview about key aspects related to the following standards. Um, we, as each, try to support uh, fruit and vegetable value chain actors and to support them in their efforts to certify their production and, uh, and products. And how we did it? We did it in two ways, through our core component activities and through grants under contract schemes or program. Activities related to certification mainly consist of training, implementation support, auditing, and certification. You see now two samples, actually, of certificates. One, for example, that was awarded to a company that became part, with part of our program for uh, supporting certification, and they obtained IFS, or the leading at the moment, uh, food safety and quality standard, while the other was where we supported production managers of fruit and vegetable processing companies in order to increase their capacities and to embed new knowledge. And the, the second one, the, the copy of the certificates that you see, is for internal auditor, uh, it's internal auditor certificate for ISO 22000 standard. So, what was the outcome of all our efforts? We managed through the previously through the forms that we that I previously mentioned, we managed to support various value chain stakeholders, and we supported uh, many certificates that were of relevance and importance to our beneficiaries or clients. So at the end, we managed through our support 36 global GAP certificates were issued to our beneficiaries, 12 organic. 6 HACCP or Hazard Analysis Critical Control Point Certificates, 13 ISO 22000, 3 IFS Certificates, 1 BRC Certificate, and we also supported uh, laboratories in order to obtain ISO 17025 17, Certificate, and at the end, I have to mention that we supported uh, the process of 17 production managers from Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serbia, and Montenegro to obtain a certificate of internal auditor for ISO 22000 standard. I mean, on the on the pictures below, you can see some of the organic products that we uh, that we supported in order to get certified and in order to get more value added and to create more benefits to, to the producers. Uh, what happened as a result of this? Uh, I will take one case study. It is a company called Vori from Gevgelia, which is southern part of North Macedonia. The company was established in 1991, a small scale processor, and they are mainly involved in processing of vegetables and fruits to some extent. Uh, they are one also member of the association of processors from North Macedonia. So they went into the, so they joined our program for 
being uh, certified with IFS standard, which is once again one of the leading world standards for food quality and food safety. And what happened as a result after the company obtained the certificate. So they still keep to maintain that standard. Uh, they update or they do regular recertification on annual basis because this standard is updated every year. And as a result of that standards, they manage to attract new buyers from Germany, including Kareve Group, Yedeka Group, which, which are one of the leading uh, retailers in Germany and within the European Union. And because of that, they increased its export to Germany. So I believe that according to our information that uh, as a result of this uh, certificate, they managed to increase the export by 70,000 euros in year one after they got the certificate. But that's not the most important issue. The most important issue is that they open new doors and a new exporting opportunity is emerged as a result of this certification. So just briefly to conclude, now on the European market, but on global markets, I would say compliance with international food safety standards is essential for producers and processors. And because of that, not uh, only from the region that it supported, but overall, uh, companies should meet these standards in order to secure uh, to secure food quality, food safety, and especially to send a positive message to their target audience. That means to their clients and consumers. And because of that, I would conclude that. Adherence to this standard is crucial for the success and competitiveness of businesses in the fruit and vegetable industry, but in the whole food sector, if, if you look at it on, on, a, on a global scale. I think I'm right in time, so I would like to thank you. And if there are questions, I'm more than glad to answer them. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Sasho. Uh, and I think we, we will have a question that we'll follow up on uh, in the chat, but uh, we'll get back to that uh, after our presentations are finished. And uh, just a couple of notes, I think, that are uh, important um, in Sasha's discussion, as we've talked about, you see sort of the number of, of uh, uh, producers that have met cert certain certifications. And certainly we have bilateral projects that that also do certifications as well. So edge is a little bit different that it's regional, but the ultimate goal um, is, is to, uh, again, reorient uh, trade towards the EU, in many cases, and away from, from the Russian market, which many firms in this region were relying upon for many years. But obviously, due to uh, war and conflict and sanctions, and et cetera, it has made that, that market um, largely inaccessible and also less reliable. So that's the appeal to, to the European market and in, um, in achieving these, cert these certifications is ensuring that they can compete on, on a very competitive uh, market like the EU or, or elsewhere in the world for that matter. Um, and also another thing that uh, Sasha, we've, we've, we've heard um, just to reemphasize is that uh, standard certifications, they, they don't go away, they continually evolve. So just because you have one certification today, it doesn't mean uh, a year from now that a new certification won't, won't be required. Uh, we see in the EU market clearly um, with um, the green uh, green revolution, green growth uh, plans and things of that sort that are impacting the organic revolution that we've seen. Those those are sort of new areas where we've been able to, to, to tap uh, into some of these certifications. So thank you, uh, Sasha. Um, and you. hopefully we'll come back to you with some more questions. And finally, we have one more list. Um, uh, our last panelist is Blagoya Mukanov. Uh, he is the CEO of Agfutura Technologies. Uh, Bogoya is an expert in precision agriculture and farm business development and founded Agfutura in 2016. Bogoya will present RAMAS, which is an acronym for Remote Agriculture Monitoring and Advisory System, a uh, cutting edge digital tool in agricultural production, which Edge supported. So with that, uh, Bogoya, um, over to you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, I would like to start this presentation and use this opportunity to thank the management and the consultancy team of the Edge project that uh, uh, recognized our idea and our concept uh, that it's enough impactful for the region and allows us to really make a change in uh, uh, North Macedonia and the Western Balkan region agricultural sector. 
Uh, uh, I would like to say that uh, the concept that I would uh, present today is uh, basically a concept that was implemented uh, in uh, more than uh, 11 farms across the Western Balkan uh, region, more specifically covering three countries, North Macedonia, Serbia, and Kosovo, where we were able to establish uh, reference farms in order to continue with our core approach in sharing knowledge and technology that is peer-to-peer -peer approach, which is essential, especially for uh, farm structures uh, that are characteristics for the Western Balkan region, uh, predominantly represented by uh, small and medium farms. Sorry, my slides are not changing. Ah, it's good now, I suppose. Before I start, uh, usually there is a very narrow understanding when we talk about uh, digital agriculture, most of the focus uh, of donors, scientists, and uh, other supporters of digital agriculture is to put more attention on the digital technologies uh, and very little on the, the digitalization as a process. And I think that uh, this was something that Edge recognized it right away and allowed us to, to have this freedom to 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 express our model and to implement our model where we put focus uh, equal focus on the digitalization as a process that has its own activities and processes and the digital technologies to be observed as a tool not as a priority focus because uh, the main focus of the digital agriculture is how to make farms more optimized more economical uh, and uh, more competitive on the market and uh, having only digital technologies in the farm, uh, it's not enough. Uh, uh, there is a lot of definitions. What is the scope and the scale, the, sc the scope of digital agriculture? Uh, one of the most accepted uh, definition uh, that is done by several authors, uh, scientists in this area, with scientists from the States, uh, Greece, uh, Netherlands, uh, that lead this topic of digital agriculture uh, is uh, basically uh, a concept that is consistent of three layers of technologies. That is technologies that are connected with guiding systems, recording technologies and reacting technologies. I will start with uh, the recording technologies, which covers basically everything that gathers data starting from satellite up to small sensors into the soil, uh, drones, uh, meteor stations, and any other device that keeps record, gathers some kind of a data on continuous or one-time basis, uh, and that allows uh, support the decision-making in crop management. Reacting technologies are digital technologies that basically are directly involved in uh, directly implementation of uh, all programs and decisions uh, through different kind of uh, devices and equipment on the field. And uh, basically it can be precision agriculture, uh, drones for precision agriculture, precision application of pesticides. It can be smart fertilizer spreaders and uh, different kind of other equipment that, that are nurtured with data that comes from the recording technologies. And then the, on the, in the end are the guiding systems. Basically, it covers all other technologies that are based on GNSS technologies that allows precision uh, application of uh, any kind of operations that allows precision uh, uh, methods. And uh, it's, uh, it, it has uh, standard GNSS technologies like GIS, uh, but also there are some other specific technologies, independent technologies that are guiding technologies that are, uh, let's say, out, outside of the mainstream that are becoming uh, extremely attractive in the last couple of, of uh, years in order to have more stability uh, on the field uh, when it comes to connection. Uh, what is the main focus of the process of digitalization? Uh, since day one that we have started, uh, 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 it's the, the, the main focus is on 
uh, well understanding the decision making uh, of the farmers uh, and uh, how do they make decisions and uh, how through digital technologies and digital data we can uh, support their decisions and uh, we can say that that's why uh, we always present ourselves as a private extension agency that is directly focused on how to support the decision process in crop management uh, in small and medium farms in the in the region. And uh, making uh, database decision making uh, is essential in order to make sustainable and profitable decisions. Uh, in in uh, any uh, crop management decision making, we go through four phases. We start with the, the with the diagnosis to understand what is the economy and the technology situation of the company. We create uh, of the farm. Uh, we create the plan. Uh, we implement the plan and we monitor and we evaluate. More, uh, let's say, visually, this is how our uh, Rama system works. We start from the monitoring layer where with different kind of reporting technologies, we gather data that enters the data center. We analyze this uh, data with a team of agronomists. Uh, I would say that AG Futura is one of the rare companies in the region that employs highly qualified agronomists and agroeconomists that allows us to really make an in-depth analysis in order to create a data precision database reports that uh, on the end, again, are ending uh, at the recommendation, we call it recommendation adaptation layer, at the farmer's layer. And uh, digitalization, it's not a one-time process that lasts only one year. It's a continuous process because uh, it takes um, um, uh, the entire process, uh, uh, it's every year is under calibration. Uh, and uh, uh, according to our experience for a regular small and medium farm uh, in uh, North Macedonia in the region, it takes around three to five years to really calibrate and to, uh, to come up with a final solution of uh, digital uh, model solution for small and medium farms. Uh, we cover all five er uh, main areas of crop management, which is uh, soil management, crop nutrition, crop protection, irrigation and fertigation, and harvest management. And everything then ends up uh, with uh, basically uh, what we believe that uh, our services are contributing significantly into uh, enabling better access to the markets as a result of uh, much better cost management, uh, better competitive prices, and uh, through the supply chain optimization, more specifically through uh, uh, traceability, which is allowed through the data that we provide, we allow uh, farms to much better uh, integrate themselves in the, in the value chain and uh, be more competitive and grow uh, as a result of being on a, a larger market network for fresh uh, uh, vegetables, fruits, and other agricultural products. Yeah, this is my presentation. I, I hope that I kept the time. Lauren, you were <laughs> signaling several times. If you have any any additional question, digital agriculture is a very wide topic. I'm more than willing to 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 talk about this. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Goya. Um, excellent presentations, everyone. Uh, really appreciate your time. Um, I think just another point to 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 latch onto uh, with Logoya's sort of digitization, and this even goes to digitization digitization uh, across uh, the region, uh, is particularly important given the in in the Western Balkans, and this is I know the case in other parts of the world too. So perhaps there are those of us who are listening, where these digitization uh, revolution is is really getting underway, and it's a, it's critical in the Western Balkans in uh, in large part because we also have a shortage of a workforce where out migration is a tremendous issue uh, in every country in our region, uh, oftentimes where uh, youth who would be engaged in um, in food and vegetable production, working in, in family farms, et cetera, a traditional sort of uh, landscape have immigrated to uh, other countries uh, in the EU or neighboring countries in the Western Balkans to seek opportunities outside of their their native lands. So 
digitization helps it compensate in, in some regards for the loss of, of, of manpower, um, but also opens a new sector and digitization and new IT skills that can be developed. And, and so there's a that, uh, sort of complement to some of the issues that we really see region-wide in, in Europe and Eurasia. Uh, so thanks again uh, for your efforts, uh, in, in especially in, in the private sector, that's, that's want to really build in our sustainability. Thank okay. you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and so I, I guess now we're sort of into the Q and A a session, and and so if um, anybody uh, would like to to say anything before we kick off, I'm happy to to let anyone uh, weigh in uh, on any topics that were discussed, uh, or I can scroll up and I see a question here that uh, is from uh, Dick Tinsley and is probably related to more uh, Sasho and. Uh, 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 your your fruit and vegetable experience, uh, perhaps uh, Blagoya as well. And the question is, when working with smallholder producers, how much does it cost to certify each smallholder producer and who pays for this? Uh, aren't administrative costs such as certification more associated with the number of people you are dealing with than the land that they manage? Yeah, well, for small scale producers, I mean, I have to to be very honest and to say that there are minimum basic costs for, for example, for implementation and certification of particular standards, including global GAP, which is a standard for fresh produce. And sometimes for very small producers, the costs are not small, could be quite high. But again, uh, global GAP as organization, they have that in mind and they, uh, offer now two possibilities. There is option two also, which is group certification. That means when many small scale farmers through their consolidator, trader, agent, uh, or exporter can, uh, for much less money, can get into the certification process and meet the requirements related to global gap. Thank you, Sasha. And not to put you on the spot, uh, Blago, but are there perhaps? Oh, and Asmika, please, yes, actually, uh, please. I just want to add what to what Sasha said. Uh, we actually had a, a similar example where we had a grant that we uh, awarded to one of the associations of uh, cooperatives in Macedonia and two other cooperatives in Serbia, co uh, associations of cooperatives of. Uh, uh, Vojvodina and south of Serbia, and they actually did what Sasha explained. They uh, provided so-called group um, certification uh, for the for the association, which covered more than 500 farmers, small farmers that are uh, members of those associations. And CBS had a couple of similar cases as well, another grantee of ours. So I think that is very, very important point, especially for the smaller farmers, smaller producers. Yeah, on the top of that, I would just like to add something. I mean, when we look at the standards, we mainly see, for example, a possibility for exports to the EU. But at the same time, me personally as a consumer, you know, when I'm buying fresh or processed fruits and vegetables, although we are still not part of the EU, EU family, but also I would like to be uh, sure that the products that I'm buying are safe and according to certain standards. So, uh, whether we like it or not, this idea of certification and uh, compliance of pr products with our expectations, I mean, it's never ending story. It will never stop now. You know, it's. Thank you. Thank you, Sasha. And not to put you on the uh, spot, uh, Blago, Blagoja uh, Milosevsky, not the not the other Blagoja M that we have, since we have two here. Um, is th is this also an issue in the light uh, manufacturing industry? Because you have some not just smallholder farmers, but you have very small producers that you work with in the textile and wood manufacturing. Have you seen uh, similar similar approaches? Um, well, uh, uh, for the light manufacturing, uh, the companies uh, are required to certify for various uh, standards. But it's on the individual basis because most of these uh, companies would have at least uh, 20 people. Uh, so they are eligible for, for certification. 
what is also happening is that EU Parliament has uh, recently developed, uh, 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 delivered uh, the so-called Supply Chain Act, which uh, will came into which will come into force in 2028, and it is expected that all companies uh, uh, that uh, have more than 1,000 employees and uh, a turnover of, of over 250 million euro that they will have to do a due diligence of their supply chains in re regard to workforce and in regard to uh, saving of the environment so that would i believe uh, mean that uh, some of these responsibilities the companies will try to transfer to the uh, companies in the supply chain so that will uh, further make uh, uh, the certifications even more important for the light manufacturing uh, sector Thank you. That's all very interesting. And, and again, we see the, the EU, uh, it's, it's always a constantly evolving market. So always have to keep a, a pace of, of developments. Um, so, uh, moving on to a, a, another question, um, that we have in the chat box, um, what were the commonalities found across the different locations, North Macedonia, Kosovo, Serbia, Albania, Azerbaijan, Georgia, et cetera. In terms of food safety regulation and compliance, did non-conformities mirror each other across the countries or were there notable differences? So I suppose that's for Sasho again. Yeah, thank you. Well, I also, uh, I saw the chat. Well, I mean, in general, all these Western Balkan six countries, as we are moving towards the, the EU, I mean, uh, some countries earlier, some countries later, but we are absorbing you know the policies and regulations coming from the eu because we believe because uh, that they are sound policies and regulations aim to protect consumers so that's that's the key part now when we talk about different countries you know from the western balkan regions in particular uh, the development stage where they are at are, is i mean varies but in general in every country the general food food law or maybe in other countries is called differently, but in general, in general, it is general food law. I mean, more or less, I mean, basically they copy the same principles coming from the, from the EU. Now, when we see the, the production structure in the Western Balkan countries and export competitiveness and potential, I mean, okay, North Macedonia is very strong in processed vegetables in particular, uh, and export of fresh uh, vegetables and fruits. Compared to that, for example, in Serbia, we have completely different story. They are net exporter of it, importer of vegetables, but they are exporting fruits, especially berry fruits, uh, to a great extent. And they are among top three exporters of raspberry, blueberry, and blackberry in the world. In Bosnia, we have also very strong uh, frozen berry uh, sector, uh, and they are also significant exporter worldwide. But uh, on, in terms of vegetables, they are net importer. Uh, Albania, recently, when I was there, I've seen drastic change and huge investment in the fresh sector, particularly of fresh vegetables. And they are increasing the export significantly, while processing industry is still not developed compared to, let's say, North Macedonia and Serbia. And Kosovo, they have a mixed structure. Uh, they import a lot, but they also export, in particular, uh, processed vegetables internationally, especially to the EU market. Although, once again, they are importing a lot, even from North Macedonia. Uh, for in fresh segment, they are also doing pretty fine because uh, they are trying now to export uh, berry products and other fruits, but organic, in order to add more value to their production because the, due to their territory and production structure, they cannot compete actually in conventional production. And Montenegro, the last one, uh, unfortunately, uh, they have a very small territory that is devoted to uh, production of fruits and vegetables. They mainly in grape production, table grape production, uh, but basically, we can count that country as net importer of fresh and processed fruits and vegetables. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Sasha. And um, I think that's uh, you know, one of the goals uh, of EDGE was uh, an attempt to take many of these um, 
sort of smaller economies, which are, are independently uh, unable to, to really compete um, in, in individually on, in certain sectors. And so aligning uh, many of these standards across the region so that there can be sort of joint um, uh, initiatives in, in perhaps supplying major producer or major suppliers, uh, major wholesalers in, in Europe, uh, consolidating uh, uh, across countries has been a goal of, of EDGE. And so in, ensuring that they have compatible standards and, and policies aligned is, is something that's sort of unique about this project uh, compared to a bilateral project, for instance. Um, so thank you for, well, for your insights. You are very correct. And I would like finally to add that, for example, we have identified even in Montenegro small scale producers that started to emerge. And we included them in firstly in our training programs in order they to understand, first of all, the rules, philosophy, procedures, what they have to do in order be, to be compliant with requirements from local, regional, or international buyers. Before talking about implementation and certification. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah. The for those who haven't uh, worked in, in the Balkans before, it is, uh, it is a unique uh, environment um, that we are uh, operating in, but uh, definitely lessons learned hopefully can be, be shared um, across bigger sort of sub-regions in different, ge different geographies. Um, so thank you. And uh, uh, another question here that I think can, uh, is applicable to, to everyone. Um, so uh, from Michael Johnson, has EDGE found that introduction and use of digital technologies by firms have reduced internal operating costs and increased the firm's competitiveness. So I think uh, certainly we can we can uh, probably speak about that in in all sectors. So maybe uh, Blugoya Mukanov, uh, since you have quite a bit of experience in this in this area, maybe you can start, and then we can uh, perhaps talk to to Blugoya Milshevsky uh, for light industry, and then Sasho uh, to to wrap that up. What is the precise question again? Sorry, Stephen. Uh, sorry. Yes. Uh, has Edge found that introduction and use of digital technologies by firms have reduced internal operating costs and increased the firm's competitiveness? Uh, uh, look, I need to be transparent in our case for specifically when it comes to the our attempt uh, that was financed by by Edge is that. Uh, we need to close the entire vegetation, uh, let's say, period in order to really show the numbers. But uh, according to our experience, yes, most definitely, and uh, I'm more than 100% sure that we will show empirically and visually that costs will be reduced, especially when it comes to cost to fertilizers. Uh, and this is very crucial considering the uh, significant increase of fertilizers in uh, in the uh, in the last two years, as a result of the war in Ukraine and the sanctions and everything that is happening globally, uh, and um, not only that, uh, I I think that what digital agriculture and precision agriculture, uh, not only in these eleven farms but in general, uh, as a result of our effort, uh, uh, I think that uh, it can have a significant impact on food safety. And a lot of people are forgetting when we are talking about digital agriculture, the direct relation with food safety, because we significantly decrease everything that is chemical. And not only that, in context of what is Sasha and, and uh, is, is talking, we have enough data that are uh, objectively gathered in order to prove that the product is safe. So yes, costs will be reduced, Operations will be optimized, and yes, agriculture products are becoming more competitive. Very interesting. Just one, yes, and Logoya, uh, please. Uh, yes, I would add a few words about uh, digitalization and how it uh, would help, how it helps the light manufacturing sector. It helps in several stages because digitalization is not only production but also design and also sales. So in the design uh, part, they help them save time. Uh, we had in the textile and the apparel industry sector, one company from um, North Macedonia who is uh, doing uh, 3D design of clothing. And then out of the clothing, they would make the templates for cutting and then sewing. 
And um, some companies uh, from Serbia and from Bosnia and from the region in general recognized that the possibility and they established contacts with uh, and cooperation with, uh, with this company from Northern Sinai. So it's uh, uh, in that regard, it's saving time. How much time? It's very difficult to say for the textile, but uh, if you go manually, it will take you a month at least to, to uh, go from uh, design of the product until the cutting templates, while here, it was um, a matter of, of days. In regard to production, the simulation models uh, and the optimization and line balancing that the, the consultants that Edge engaged, uh, they showed that uh, savings and optimization can, uh, optimization of uh, uh, through the use of computer simulations can help uh, induce, into, increase productivity by 10 to at least by 10 to 30 percent uh, per company. So uh, in uh, in, and in the, in the sales uh, part, um, many, uh, our experience from uh, participating in trade shows and B2B show that trade fairs have, for some, for now, lost their importance that they had before COVID, that they are uh, less visited. However, B2Bs are very, very important. And uh, we uh, discovered and um, we uh, supported that, that um, the sales can also be done online. And uh, some companies uh, uh, said that they, uh, uh, promote and sell in the furniture business that they promote and sell only online. So it does uh, save uh, costs for the companies in, in many ways. Thank you. Well, if I may continue, I mean, sure. yeah, the, the, the explanation of Blagoa is, is perfect, but uh, I would just like to add and to comment that it's for particular sectors, you know, I experienced completely different scenario in fruit and vegetable business after the COVID when trade fair started to operate normally, people could not wait to go and participate in the regional international trade shows. Why? Because we are talking about, about food products. I mean, it's simply not enough just to place them on the internet or because apart from uh, physical appearance, there is a taste. and during the trade trade fairs, people have a chance to taste the product, you know. Uh, so, I, I mean, looking at the support that we provided to Agro Belgrade and B2B parts and B2B forums uh, over the, the, the last couple of years, I mean, it was really my, my personal, not only my personal impression, but it was obvious that when you deal or trade with food products, you, you have to have a direct contact. It cannot be easily replaced only doing it online. Great, thank you for your explanations. And I see we're right up at time. Uh, and so maybe I'll just uh, close off that question with a couple of, uh, a couple of notes. And I think it um, is great to, to get these response from, from experts and also to hear you know, our experience with the private sector um, certainly, yes, the, both in terms of, uh, cutting costs, digitization is really critical, um, as, as we've highlighted, uh, you know, the, the, the competitiveness, uh, in the fertilizer market, for instance, was something that we didn't see, uh, clearly, um, you know, for, for until recently with the, the issue, the war in, in Ukraine. So, uh, saving costs with fertilizer is certainly something that helps make firms more competitive. Um, and then increasing sales by using digitization uh, to market yourselves using online sales is something that um, has been very, very critical. So on both ends, um, generating revenue and, and decreasing are, are both critical. And I, I did see Dick, Dick Tinsley, you asked, uh, will, will you also reduce waste? Yes, I believe all of these <laughs> digitization efforts reduce waste. Uh, part of the circular economy, uh, that's, that's definitely one thing that we're uh, focused on uh, and will be for years to come, the EU is definitely very uh, interested in, in reducing wastes when it comes to uh, both ag uh, and, and textile and, and wood, wood processing. So, so thank you all for your questions. I'm uh, closing up very quickly here. Uh, Yasminka, maybe I'll leave uh, the floor to you. Again, I wanna thank all of our panelists. Uh, thank you to everyone who participated with questions, the attendees, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, Yasminka, I'll leave you with uh, the last word. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Stephen. I just want to add one more, one or two more remarks. Um, we are entering the last month of uh, edge implementation after 5 years, and I must say that within these 5 years, we have uh, uh, experienced 1st, the COVID 19, which uh, made a big disruptions in many supply chains, but also opened some of the 
new opportunities, especially in terms of digitalization. And everybody had to do very, very steep um, learning and to start implementing more and more digital tools. But we as Ed decided to go more into in depth and to, to use the dig digital tools uh, to provide more um, uh, more in depth uh, changes in in our beneficiaries, like uh, improving the competitiveness, in, improving the productivity, balancing balancing the production lines, and so on. And the other one, uh, the very very big challenge was the the Russia's war on Ukraine, which also created big big um, uh, disruptions in the supply chains and in the markets and in everything. And here we were also able to see that many many producers which uh, very comfortably relied on Russian market, which is very big and not very demanding uh, in terms of quality or certifi certificates. Many companies uh, from, from the Western Balkan region, but especially from the Caucasus region, region, they realize that they have to move quickly and find new markets, diversify their markets, because Russia is no longer available. Russia is no longer um, relevant for them. But it is it is a process. They cannot do it overnight. They first had to learn very quickly what are the demands of the, these new markets, what they need to do, how to understand the market, and then what are the certificates that are needed. Because without these certificates, you cannot, you simply cannot enter those markets. And on the way uh, to to these uh, changes, we were as Edge, we were ready to to support those companies on every way, uh, step forward. Uh, these these um, changes. So uh, with this, I would like to thank um, all the participants for their time and their interest and their questions. Also, I would like to thank um, the moderator. Thank you, Stephen, and also our uh, distinguished participants, Blagoja, the other Blagoja and Sasho. Thank you so much for your insightful presentations and discussions. So with that, uh, I, I think we, we can close this uh, panel discussion. And I wish you a very good and pleasant day today. All the best. Thank you. Bye.